So while we're letting people in, how about you go to your Google Classroom and go to today's Zoom, Thursday Zoom. And open up this PowerPoint here, the student classification. Okay, so um, we're gonna split our screen. If you know how to do that, you can do that while I am going the long route to my skeletal system. Yesterday, you guys were doing some guided notes that were fill in the blanks. And um, I know a lot of the blanks weren't literally filled out on that PowerPoint. That's how I had a copy with me. Um, but if you use your context cues, um, you'll notice that like the next sentence uses the blank as the topic of the sentence. So um, maybe it's like blank is made up of hard tissue. And then it says bones do this. So bones is the blank. So quite often those blanks were followed the very next sentence with, with the term to fill in. And I do have um, an answer key for that. So um, I will put that into the Google Classroom because I know that you guys had struggled with that. So I'll link that um, later. I was trying to catch up with grades today, but um, that internet was causing me problems. I was telling the kids that were on earlier today, like my, um, there's a technician at my place right now fixing my, the internet. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be good. Um, so other than blanks that you couldn't find, do you guys have any questions from yesterday or yeah, it was yesterday. Okay. So I think, um, so you, you're, you're going to have a note sheet that you can fill in as we go here. Um, and a couple of things about that one is like, you could highlight your, I don't have the one with the blanks up, but you do, you can type in a different color. Um, to make it stand out for you. You can highlight or something. Down here, you know, you have the notes. So like Miss Snook expounds, talkity talk, 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 talk. You could, maybe I'm giving you some examples or something, or I say, this is gonna be on your test. You might want to add some notes down there. And then your student version filled in is what you're gonna turn in today. And that is your attendance, because like right now, I didn't write down anybody's names. And without my glasses, I don't see your faces. So um, I do wear contacts, too. <laughs> um, so it would be hard for me to say, yeah, I know I saw this person, this person, this person, because I, I don't see you. Um, so definitely make sure you turn that in. Turn it in as done. If you like to do handwritten notes, that's fine. You can take a picture of your handwritten notes and put those in the um, in the Google world. That would work too. So splitting your screens, if you're on a Chromebook, um, I believe you have a control button and then your bracket. So you would push those two and it should allow you to print, split your screens. So you'd have your Zoom in one screen and you'll have your lecture in the second screen, like me talking. So you can put your work in one screen and your Zoom in the other screen. If you're working on um, a laptop, you can just grab the tab and pull it out and that'll create a second um, window for you. Um, you you're gonna wanna change the size, you know, in order to fit Miss Snook on one side and your work on the other side, you'll just like make this be half or less than half, whatever, you know, whatever size you, is work, works for you. And then you'll have the zoom in the other window. So if you have them both open, um, that's gonna, I think, make it easier to do work and this at the same time. And when we do um, breakouts, we're not gonna do a breakout today, but when we do do breakouts, that's a good technique to use. You got your breakout here, the work you're doing over here. Okay. So if you guys don't have any questions for me, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. But today um, we have two things we wanna classify. One is bone tissue itself. So remember cells go together to make tissues and tissues go together to make organs. The bone itself is an organ because it's made of several different types of tissues. It's blood, nervous, muscle, I'm not muscle, connective. Um, but the tissue that makes it up is only made of one type of 
cell and that's the bone cells. So you refer to osseous tissue. I don't know if that light in the background is bothering you. Um, osseous tissue refers to bone. So any osseous, osteo, OS prefix is going to be related to bone, like osteoporosis, um, osteoarthritis, osteogenesis. Anything with osteo is going to be bone. So osseous tissue is bone. And there's two types of tissue. Um, so we're going to talk about those two types, the compact and the spongy. And you got a little bit of an introduction yesterday in the preview. Um, then we're going to take the bones themselves, the organ, and we're going to classify them according to their shape and composition. Okay, so first of all, we have compact and spongy bone, and I normally do a microscope lab with this, and I'm going to see what I can do to give you um, that, not today, but see if we can't incorporate something next week that is lab-like. Um, ooh, I do have one you can do at home. It's just vinegar and a chicken bone leg chicken leg. Um, anyways, so we want to classify spongy and compact. This is compact. So first of all, as its name says, it's compact, right? The cells are close together. It's also called dense tissue. And I often will refer to um, the other name as well. So it's good to know both. Um, characteristic, like on a test, I would give you a microscope slide and ask you to identify this. You would recognize compact bone very easily. It looks like a whole bunch of tree stumps. If you cut them across, you know how they have like their annual rings. Um, so I think it reminds me quite a bit of the annual rings on a tree. So these are um, several cells, but their arrangement is in circles. And we're gonna look at that a little bit more on the next slide. Um, so usually we find this on the outside of the bone because it's compact and dense, it's very protective. And that's one of your um, functions of the skeletal system is to serve as support and protection. And that's coming from the dense layer. Okay, so this is that haversion system. I'm gonna go back. Each one of these big sets of circles is a haversion system or an osteon, O-S-T-E-O-N. So like here I see one, two, three, four osteons or haversion systems. So now we're zooming in on just one of them. So down the middle you have the haversion canal or central canal, either one will work. So um, picture a whole bunch of straws on their like standing up on their ends, right? So your bones are basically made of all these tubes arranged together. So um, that it's like a pillar, right? Made of a whole bunch of tubes. Inside the tube, so inside the straw, is where you find your blood vessels and nerves. And that's the perversion canal or um, central canal. All connective tissue is classified according to its matrix. Matrix is the material outside of the cells. So these black things are the cells themselves. They're going to spit out material that buries them. That material is called matrix. It's got collagen, calcium, phosphorus, um, hydroxyapatite, some salts. And so um, that is what's really making the bone hard, okay? So that material is laid down in layers, and this is those concentric rings that you would see in a tree. So those layers are called lamella, so L and L, lamella layers. Heads up, the microscopic words for bone structure are crazy. Um, I kind of love them, I love words. So they're odd, they'll take some using in order to get you know, it in your head. The cells themselves are called osteocytes and they sit in pits called lacuna. So this, this lacuna holds an osteocyte. That osteocyte then releases material that buries it. Okay, so lacuna, like lacuna matata, such a wonderful phrase. Then um, they have these little cracks. These little cracks are called canaliculi, this word right here, canaliculi. That's a hard one to remember, and I have a stupid mnemonic, I think, can I lick your eye? <laughs> and that just helps me remember the word, because it has that pattern of sound. 
Um, so canaliculi are these little cracks that connect each of the osteocytes, the cells themselves, to the blood supply. So all the cells way out here need to get the blood from inside. So just a little bit about this word, osteo remembers bone, site is cell. So any word you see that ends in site is a something cell. So like a myocyte is a muscle cell, a leukocyte is a white cell, erythrocyte, red cell. So use your root word and your um, suffix. So bone cell, it's probably actually a root itself. So this is just a different picture showing you those structures a little bit better. You have your artery and vein. Usually, usually arteries are pictured in red and veins are blue. Um, and then your nerve. So then we see the concentric rings. The material itself is laid down in lamella, layers. Canaliculi are these little cracks. And then the osteocyte, this would be the nucleus of the osteocyte, that purple dot, and it sits inside of a lacuna. On the test, I always have students label a diagram of the microscopic drawings. And so you would expect to give that information back to me similar as you did on that slide before, okay? Any questions on the compact bone? Dense tissue found on the outside of the cell or outside of the bones, okay. So inside the bone, which I can't show you, if you've ever like cut open a bone um, and you've seen like the marrow on the inside, right? That's in the spongy bone. So the spongy bone like this doesn't have those ring structures. So if you had these two sitting next to each other, you would definitely know one from the other. Um, so this red part is the actual bone tissue. Um, this is where I find the cells, okay? This is extracellular. This is like your marrow. So it has a good blood supply, which is why they appear red. Those little divots, you can see these circles. So lacuna are a lot more obvious in the spongy bone than they are in the compact bone, because in the compact, the cell fills it. So this is also called cancellous tissue, and I use that word more than I use spongy. Um, so be familiar with both terms. Usually found on the inside of the bone, it has a little bit of compressive ability. So um, like your wrist bones are filled with cancellous tissue, which is good because when we fall and we land on our hands, right, um, that's going to absorb the shock. It's porous. So all of this space, the white stuff is space. So that's the porosity. And then it contains a large number of blood vessels, which is what gives it that red color. So it's thicker in the epiphysis. The epiphysis is the ends of long bone. So this is a long bone. And the middle part is your shaft or diaphysis. The ends are called the epiphyses. Um, so it's going to fill the epiphyses of the long bone. Okay, so the structure is not as um, easy maybe to talk about in the cancellous tissue because it doesn't have those circles. It has what's called trabeculae. So again, I'm gonna go up. Um, the trabeculae is the shape that this um, matrix takes. It's no particular shape, right? They refer to it as a lattice. So that is called trabeculae. So it's not organized in the osteons, which were your circles. Um, the trabeculae contain the osteocytes within the lacuna, so those pits that you could see, you could see little holes in the red part of the slide before. That's the lacuna. And then inside of that, there's a dot. And it's kind of like um, a black eyed pea is what it reminds me of, just a dot inside of it. Um, and the dot would be the osteocyte. So we have lots of marrow, red marrow, um, in between the trabeculae. And that is where blood cells are being made. So hematopoiesis is the formation of red cells. You'll need to know that word on the test. It'll show up again um, in another chapter too. Hema means blood, poiesis is formation. So this is formation of blood, the process of making um, new blood cells, your white blood cells, your red blood cells. Um, that's happening in the red marrow. The dogs really like the marrow because it's full of nutrition. Okay, so this is showing you both tissues. This is the trabeculae of the spongy bone. To me, this looks like coral, if you're familiar with coral. 
On the outside, you see that's very solid. So that's the compact bone. So you have hard on the outside and then it's kind of soft on the inside. Here you can see another example. I told you like to picture a whole bunch of tubes all standing up. So you can tell this is one tube, the osteon or reversion system. And there's lots of those running the full length of the bone. The majority of the bone you can see here is that compact bone and just a little bit looks like that coral. So just a little bit of that, the inner layer is, this, is the spongy bone. Okay, any questions so far? Just talking about the two tissue types. So um, the tissues, right, that's at the cellular level. The bones themselves are at the organ level. So putting those tissues together, depending on how they're put together, you have four different types of bones, types of bone. Um, and I try to emphasize that because I feel like kids get really confused and miss those when I'm asking for a type of bone or a type of tissue, they might give me the wrong answer. So I'm trying to give you the level of organization we're talking. Um, but we'll talk about long bones that you see in all of your appendages, the arms, the legs, the fingers and toes. Even though your fingers are short compared to your arm, they're still considered long bones because of their orientation. They're longer than they are wide. Short bones are found in your wrists and ankles and in your knee. I like this picture because it's color coded. So here's your carpals and your tarsals and your patella. Those are all made of um, short bones. Flat bones are in your skull. You might have guessed that. Also, the ribs are made of short bones. And then irregular bones don't have a particular shape. Your vertebrae, they are irregular bones, as is your whole pelvic girdle, your coxa your pelvic girdle. Okay, so we'll talk about each one of those individually. It's, it's relatively short. And to start with, here's your short bones. So in your wrists, ankles, and in your kneecaps, your patella, you have that short bone, which is cubical in shape. So they're cubical in shape. You can see that right here. Notice, what is it filled with? Does it look like it's mostly compact or mostly spongy? Hopefully you were thinking in your head, spongy. So the majority of it is spongy, and then notice just a thin layer of compact. So that's part of its description. So on the test, you wanna be able to recognize the characteristics or descriptions of these four different types of bone, as well as give examples of where they're found. Long bones are longer than they are wide. Okay, um, the femur bone, that's what you're looking at here. This is a good example to show us the epiphysis, the end, and the diaphysis, the shaft. I'm gonna use the humerus because he's right here and the leg is a little bit further down. Can you see? So notice like it has kind of a ball end. It has kind of a ball end here. These are the epiphyses. Epi means above or upon. We're gonna be real big on prefixes, suffixes, and roots. So this would be the proximal epiphysis because it's closer to the attachment. This is our distal epiphysis because it's away from the attachment. So we're gonna be using those words from chapter one. These have a thin layer of compact on the outside filled with cancellous on the inside. The long part of it, the diaphysis, this has to withstand force from all directions, right? So it has to be very strong. So this is going to be made mostly of compact bone. Thin layer of cancellous on the inside. So the flat bones, the skull up here, it reminds me of a sandwich where the bread is your compact bone and the cancellous tissue is maybe your peanut butter or jelly or whatever you're putting in the middle. So it's two plates of compact bone with cancellous in between. So we find this in the thorax and in our skull. Your skull is divided into the cranium and face. I was deciding which word I wanted to use. Um, so, ten, so you got your compact bone as the bread and the cancellous tissue as the filler. Irregular bones, so our pelvic girdle down here, our pelvic girdle um, is the os coxa. You have two coxa put together. You'll remember that that hip was coxal. 
Um, so the pelvic girdle and then the vertebrae that I was pointing out earlier, um, we would have printed some vertebrae on our 3D printer if we were in class. Um, so they have a, a layer of compact on the outside and notice again, filled with cancellous on the inside. So because it has so much cancellous tissue or spongy bone, um, like this would be a good place to get some bone marrow if you needed to do like a test of your marrow or if you needed to get a transplant of marrow or if you needed to donate marrow, the hip would be a good place for that. This is also where you would find like stem cells since this is where cells are being formed, we could find some stem, stem cells there too. Nothing I would test you on, it's just miscellaneous information.